Uh, this is the second example for your objects when you're inclined. Now, I've taken this from April 2019, so this was last year, April. You have your motor of car with a mass of 1,200 at rest at the top of 15 meter friction, frictionless slope uh, of 28 degrees. When the brakes are loosened, it slides on its own down the hill to the bottom and immediately moves on a horizontal road on its own until it comes to rest after 20 meters. So this is a, a, a distance that it covered on a horizontal surface. This is a distance 15 meters which is covered on an inclined. So this object was at the top of an inclined. Brakes were released and then it moved on its own. There is no force applied. It moved on its own down an inclined until it comes to rest. Uh, this frictionless means we, we ignore the friction forces. So you only have uh, your force that let the object move when you release your brakes. You need to calculate the potential energy when it is at the top. A velocity after it has moved 8 meters. Remember, the distance of your incline is 15 meters. After it has moved uh, 8 meters, what was your velocity? Then the calculate your deceleration on your horizontal. And then last you calculate the condition, so you have to calculate this for. The first thing is to draw the space diagram illustrating what is being given. Let us draw uh, our object. Here's the object. The distance S is this distance. And then this distance is 50 meters. Now, it moves on top of an incline, it's moving downward. So this is the motion. It was at rest there at the top, you raise the brake and it goes down. Uh, and then this, the total distance S is 15 meters. From there, your object will cover the distance of 20. This will be 20. The total of this one is 15. The total of the incline is 15. And then the total of your plane. So the object moves from this position, goes down the incline mid on, then it moves on the horizontal surface until it comes to rest. Uh, since the object is on an incline, when it's still on the incline, the, the edge is 28. When it's still on an incline, the moment it moves, you it's only subjected to these two forces, FP. And uh, it's going uh, Downward, the applied force, that means which is going to visit your force parallel to the plane. So your initial force will only really oppose this force now, which is FP, you will have FI. You ignore your resistance force, so you ignore your friction force. You don't have any applied force, that means the applied force, which will move this object, it's your force uh, of uh, parallel to the plane. You only have these two forces. The mass of this object is 1,200. This is what this is the all this is all you have. This is H. The first initial one, H1, the first horizontal vertical distance. It started from that position and then it went to that. Question number one: calculate the potential energy at the top. Before you even release or break, the calculate your potential energy. You write down your formula for potential energy. AP is equal to M G H. Uh, that is your vertical distance. Not this H1, your vertical distance from the surface to where your object is. Uh, uh, you do have your mass 1200, uh, gravitational position is 9.8. H, this is H1, which is S15. Sine 28. It is uh, your H because sine theta is opposite, which is H1 over hypotenuse, which is 15. Now making your H1 is a of the formula to be 15 sine theta. Therefore, your mass, your object will be 1200 times 9.8 times 15 sine 28 you get your potential energy in joules one 
1,200 times 9.8 times 15 times sine. Now, this is a potential energy at the top. Second question, calculate a velocity after it has moved 8 meters. After it has moved 8 meters. Now, the, this question said, use the law of conservation of energy to calculate uh, your, your velocity. So, you use the law of conservation of energy. Now, How you use the law of conservation of energy? Uh, number two, EP loss is equal to EK gained. Now, the loss of your the loss in potential energy after it has moved eight meters is the gain in uh, in your kinetic energy. So this object. The kinetic energy was this A2814. Then it moved from this distance, uh, it moved 8 meter distance. So somewhere here, uh, say it's 8 meters, you have a vertical distance there. We, I will have H2. In that position, after it has moved 8 meters, you have a, a new potential energy. That means the difference between these two potential energy, it's a loss in potential energy. That loss will be the gain in kinetic. We need to find the loss in potential energy. The new potential energy after it has moved 8 meters. Now, uh, the, our new distance now, our new H2, the new H2 will be 8 minus, 8 minus 15 at uh, 7. So you have 7 now. The distance now is 7 on your inclined. So your new distance is 7. This distance is now 7. Then you have this H. Your, and then you have your object going downward. You need to calculate your new potential image. So this H will be now 7 sine 28. That's your new H. Therefore, your loss in potential energy EP will be MGH, which is 1200 times 9.8 times 7 sine 28. Then you get your new EP. times 9.8 times 7 sine. 28 Choose. Therefore, your EP loss will be uh, your previous one This is your loss in potential energy. The difference between your first potential energy with your new one after it has moved seven meter distance. Now, this loss in potential energy is your gain in kinetic. Therefore, your loss in potential is your gain in kinetic, and your kinetic energy is half mv squared. So, this 
is equal to ek so your ek uh, is half mv squared and then your ek is 44,168 is equal to half times 1200 v squared then you get your velocity which would be 2 times 44,168 over 1200 all this under square root therefore you get your velocity after 8 uh, Two times forty-four comma one six eight times ten exponent three divided by one thousand two hundred. So remember this is in kilo. Age of velocity using a law of conservation of energy. Uh, number three, you need to calculate your deceleration on your horizontal surface. Now, your object has moved from the top of an incline to this position, then it goes to the straight line. You need to calculate your deceleration. What do you have when it's moving on a, on a horizontal surface? You have a final velocity which is zero, you have a distance in move which is 20. You're supposed to have your initial velocity. You are, you're supposed to have your initial velocity. The initial velocity is the final velocity of an incline. So as it moves on inclined, uh, it has a final velocity at this point. The final velocity is an initial velocity for your horizontal plane. So the final velocity for your incline is an initial velocity for your horizontal. We need to calculate the final velocity there at an incline. Again, you ignore your friction because it's a friction the surface. Potential energy at the top is equal to kinetic at the bottom. Our potential energy at the top is A2814. This potential energy, that means the whole of this energy has been converted to a kinetic. So, uh, this will help you to get your final velocity, which is your initial velocity. Now, for number three, EP is equal to EK. And then your potential energy is 82814.784 equal to half 1200 v squared. Then you get your final velocity. A two eight one four point seven eight four times two divided by one thousand two hundred all under square root. So you you Final velocity at of an incline is 11.748 meters per second. This final velocity is an initial velocity for your horizontal plane. So you have your initial velocity, uh, you have your final, you have your distance moved. How you can calculate your deceleration uh, when it is moving on, a, uh, on your horizontal surface? That means you use this equation. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Your final velocity is zero. It's going to rest. Your initial velocity will be 11.748 squared plus 2 times a distance is 20. And acceleration, you get this deceleration. Three point negative three point four five one meters per second squared. That's how you get your deceleration uh, at the bottom of your incline. 
Last thing, number four, they want a kinetic energy after I say it moves 20 meters. After 20 meters, it takes rest. So, uh, your kinetic energy is half mv squared. So, after 20 meters, your velocity is zero, meaning your kinetic energy is zero. You don't have any kinetic energy when it has moved 20 meters, because after 20 meters, it went to rest. 